Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Run With Toby podcast. My name's Jared, thanks for joining us again today. In this episode, I sit down with our assistant creative director, Oz, and he and I talk about all of our creative processes behind making a Toby corporate video. If you like what you're hearing, make sure you stay tuned for the full episode. Also, don't forget to rate, subscribe, tell a friend about the Run With Toby podcast, and if you have any questions or comments, you can email us, info at tobyagency.co. Thanks for tuning in. guys welcome back to the run with toby podcast my name is jared as you can see i'm sitting here with our assistant creative director oz and uh we're gonna go ahead and jump into a little topic that we've actually been planning for a while um but yeah let's go ahead and get right into it it. well first off man welcome to your first like solo podcast here you You haven't um you haven't been on the podcast alone we did the group episode group therapy as we're, we're calling it Round the, table. Round table. Sorry. It's be Gr- round table. Group therapy is like the internal name, <laughs> gotcha. right? Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, anyway, so yeah, we did that with you. Um, and you kind of just told everybody what you yeah. do. But for anybody that may not have heard that, why don't you go ahead and just explain kind of what you do here at Toby Agency? Yeah. I know that's going to be a really long answer, but uh, um, I'll keep it short. So I am, like you said, the assistant creative director here, and I do uh, a lot of kind of different creative stuff. I started as um, I started with editing videos. And I was taking pictures too. Uh, besides that, now I do a little bit of graphic design. I help like planning the videos, which what we're going to talk today. Um, besides that, I mean, uh, like I said, just all kinds of creative stuff. Yeah. There's nothing like, there's no certain, you know, just one thing, this thing, this thing. So Yeah, totally. Yeah. You're kind of uh, hands-on in, in most aspects of the creative side. I'd even say... You give you don't write it, but you definitely give your two cents on some copy stuff. So that's cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe for the titles and stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, to help us out. Um, but don't. Yeah, I would say so. Let's let's rewind. Um, real quick before we get into the main topic. Um, you came into Toby Agency as more or less an intern. Yeah, type. yeah. Uh, the was first title like was intern, right? Yeah, yeah. For like a couple of months, I guess. You were in charge of the post production of the podcast. Yeah, so, like, yeah, I would set I started up. started with the podcast actually. Yeah. Like a year and a half ago. Yeah. Almost. That's so, I would, um, for anybody out there who who's never run a podcast or seen our, our podcast, it's pretty, it's a pretty involved, um, setup. Yeah. Uh, we'll actually probably show some behind the scenes from this one. It's pretty involved. But oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we sure, have, we sure, usually definitely. roll two, three cameras. Um, rolling multiple lines of audio, yep. and then we have to put it all together. Yep. So when you first came in, you were kind of like in charge of just putting it all together, mm-hmm. um, and that's kind of how you you kind of got like <laughs> beat into the Toby Agency yeah, pipeline, so. yeah, yeah. <laughs> more or less. Yep. Um, but then yeah, then you moved in, uh, moved up to doing some creative videos with us. Um, you've helped, you know, obviously ever since you've come on, you've helped me film multiple um, corporate style creative videos yep. uh, in a couple small ads. And uh, yeah, you've. Re- I mean, honestly, dude, you've really come into your own. I'm really impressed. Over the a yeah, year and a half, seem it seems like a long time, but it's really not a long time, especially when you're taking in that amount of information and learning, and you know, you're building your skills. So, kudos to you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you yeah. But cool. Let's okay. So let's dive into the, to today's topic, yes. which this is a first for the Run with Toby podcast. Andrew and I have definitely talked about creative video at length, you know, on both pod lights, camera, grow, and Run with Toby, but. We've never really talked about like what goes into the process yeah. of the creative side. So we've do- we've obviously dove into the marketing side of Toby Agency. That's a um, that's probably our biggest uh, service that we all the marketing side is the biggest services we add. But this year we're really ramping up video. We really want to put out there that you know, hey, we're a creative agency as well. So that's really what um, this podcast is going to hopefully just drive a little bit of uh, you know noise, just stir up the pot a little bit to get people um, people understanding like what it takes for us to do and other creative agencies because obviously we're not the only ones doing this type of video. Corporate video has been around for you know however long, right? It's um it's been going on for quite a while. It's been a lot. Yeah, I yeah. mean you can go back. I mean- yeah, you can see like really old about us. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, corporate video. Yeah. There's no, there's nothing new there, right? It's been going on probably since you know you were able to at least hire a reasonable sized film crew, or you could afford it at least back then. Uh, but now you know now it's like a dime a dozen. Anybody with like a camera or even like a couple cell phones could possibly produce a, yep. a video. And it may not be Which good, people but do a lot of yeah it may not be good but the ability to do it you know is a lot easier now because of technology and tech and we've you know we've talked about that as well um but let's talk about like behind the scenes 
like what it takes. Because after you buy all your gear, Mm -hmm. after you go and find a client, it's kind of like, now what? And how do you differentiate yourself from all the other companies or creative agencies that are doing similar video, right? Because there's a formula, Mm -hmm. right? It's very, it's pretty formulaic, right? Uh, especially like we'll take an about us, we'll probably the anatomy of an about us story. We'll break that down because that's probably the most common type of corporate video that you can do, right? It's like tell your company story. Why are you a better company than X, Y, and Z? And why should people come to you, right? Yep. yep. That's like the basic. Simple. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but we try to think of it in a different angle. And this is just probably because I come from a background where uh, I've been in really high-end budget productions. Um, I never like to name drop, but we've done really big commercials. Name and, drop. Name drop. No, I don't want to name <laughs> drop. Uh, we've done really big commercials um, in the past at the studios I worked on. Obviously, I was one person of many people. You know, We're talking sometimes like 150 person team you know from the beginning of pre-production all the way to the, the end of post-production um, but that like style of video I've always really been intrigued by because it's like you have these massive budgets and they're very creative um, but you know they're for the giant companies like Apple and beats and you know Nike and you know whatever car company you can think of any commercial you see on TV right it's like mm-hmm. it's sometimes it's easily a million dollars in budget it can be yep. very very simple to get that high but companies that are that only make a million dollars in revenue a year or less don't have that kind of budget obviously right they're sitting in the like 5 to 10,000 dollar range maybe for one video yeah. and that video needs to last them for a really long time right because they don't want to have they to can't do it every they can't year. do it yeah, yeah they can't do it every year right that budget has to go somewhere else so uh, when we concept these videos, I like to always think like, what's the most value we can give them and get them as close as possible to that large scale production. production. Yeah, the 150 people production, which is uh, it's impossible. We're never going to get there. But if we can at least yeah. aim for that, maybe we can, you know, we can hit the mark a little I mean, it's lower. Be better than cell phone videos, you know. It's right. It's better than <laughs> cell phone videos. But yeah. So, but let's talk about it because again, once you buy the equipment or you rent the equipment, however your company does it, or uh, if you're a one man production, if you're you know if you own your own gear or you're renting, whatever it is, how do you think about like and what are the steps that really set you apart from the guy who does like show up with a cell phone yes. and says I can do it for half the price, right? We're we're competing against that, like, but the reason why we charge the prices we charge are because the equipment's not cheap, right? We're not bringing cheap equipment to the table. That's number one. But number two, like the process behind it and mm-hmm. the hands-on that we're giving the client and the thought processes that we put and the hours that we put ahead of time uh, and, and after the video is shot, like really, I think are what kind of separates us apart. Definitely, yeah. Yeah, um, pre-production is really important for us. We, we spend a lot of time on pre-production, like a lot more, yeah. pro- probably a lot more than we should, you know? To make it way like way better, mm-hmm. um, yeah. I mean, we can just go step by step, kind of. Uh, we start with like a kickoff meeting, you know. Yeah. Uh, you said let's start with uh, after finding a client, you know. We yep. find the client and then we just have kickoff meeting. We talk to them, what's their goal, what we can bring us, what we can bring to the table, what do they want from yep. this video, that kind of stuff. Um, besides that, um, we get like as much as information that we like that we can uh, to start concepting the video. Yep. And then we start concepting. Honestly, like I, I, uh, I think about the those kickoff meetings. You mm-hmm. know, like so because we're a marketing agency, kind of first. That's our first foot in the door. Usually, um, I like to do what the marketing team does, or even if we're building a website, like mm-hmm. we go through like what's the brand guide, what's the tone Definitely. of the brand, Definitely. what you know, what is the voice of the brand, and that goes all the way from like not just what they say on camera or mm-hmm. look how they look on camera, but that goes into like lighting. Like what angles do we want to shoot? How you know how soft does it need what to look? What kind of lens that we're gonna use? What kind of lens are we gonna use? Gonna right, be? Yeah. right. So Everything. yeah, so in that initial kickoff meeting, we're gathering a ton of information, and like you said, the pre-production process for us is probably longer than it needs to be, but yeah. Yeah, yeah. because it's it longer it there, makes it, it makes better. the end that much easier, right? Yep. And we'll we'll get into that in a second, yep. but yeah, like so that kickoff meeting is really important because mm-hmm. we gather a ton of information on how we're gonna just approach the project and think about the client, right? So then we go into concepting and then we usually spitball like three to five ideas about yeah. like, Hey, how, how do we want to move this in once we gather all that data? Right. Uh, and I'll take one of our clients that we recently finished with and uh, we won't, we won't say any, we'll try not to say any names, <laughs> okay. Okay. but um, one of our clients, you know, their whole thing was like, we sell a product that's not really sexy. It's kind of tech. 
Um, it's insurance. Yeah, it's tech insurance. Yeah, yeah, it's tech insurance, right? It's an insurance company. Um, but they wanted to appeal to. Um, they wanted. They. I mean, they have to beat out bigger names like State Farm and Allstate and the, you know yeah. these giant companies, yes. Geico and things like that. So we obviously don't have the budget to hire great actors and you know giant production teams yeah. again. So how do we make them look really cool or appealing, right? And we mm-hmm. took the empathy route, like. Um, they really focus on being a small team mm-hmm. and being able to service their clients one on one almost. Yeah. Um, you know, at scale, yeah. of course. One of their like uh strong things is they were they had a great culture. Yeah. They wanted to show that a lot. Like right. they, uh, they said we uh approach every single client as one of our like as a as a member of our family. Right. So yeah, we want to show that. We want to be like really intimate uh video. Yep. Yeah. And I think the one of the other things is like I think w- one of the things that stood out the most to me was um when they're at work, they said basically like you can't tell the difference of the person you're working next to, whether you're at work or hanging out Definitely. outside, you know, Definitely. if you're at like a bar yes. or a restaurant or just going out like for a movie just, uh, everybody's or whatever, the same people, everybody's yeah. the same person. So I think that that told a lot of us. We're like, wow, okay, so we can put these people on camera and we don't have to fake these like fake stories about how, oh, we're great, Definitely. come yeah. to us. You know, we really just made it about the people. So we focused on why would people come to you personally for mm-hmm. this product, right? Mm-hmm. So that was that was like a big thing. And, um, and, of course, that took us, you know, a few concepts, and we had yeah, to. Yeah, let's go talk back about that. Like, how do we uh, come up with that concepts and with that inspirations and stuff? After the kickoff meeting, we have like a day or two that we just sit down, watch a lot of videos, you know, just throw some ideas to reference. each other. Yeah, just reference videos, and yep. I don't know, maybe like old videos. Like, let's use this shot. Let's use this frame. You know, there's like a two day that you missed right there uh, before we, we before we concept everything. Yeah, 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 totally. That's that's a big that's a big thing too. You know, you have to have a lot of reference videos. Yep, a lot of like I don't know uh, reference yeah. ideas. And we were we were doing visual. We do visual reference. Like, okay, so we like this shot. We Definitely. like this lighting, yep. right? Or then we go into like, oh, I like what this person's saying and how mm-hmm. they're delivering. You know their their message for their company. I think we can do something similar yep. for this company, right? So yeah, I mean anybody that tells you that they just came up with their own concept, oh. <laughs> you know, out, out like out of nowhere, like is full of it. Yeah. So we prov- we actually when we go into um into this concepting phase, you know, we're we're building this catalog yep. and we end up showing the client mm-hmm. like, hey, these are the visual references, these are the the tonal references, this is the voice, yeah. you know, style that you. I mean, want that's to go. easier for a client too. They know, yeah. but this not what they're gonna get, but um, they have some idea of it, what they're gonna get. It you helps know? set the expectations. Yeah, 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 yeah totally. It, not only what they're gonna get at the end, but it also un- makes them understand how. Oh, oh, I need to talk about our company in this yep. way because yep. it makes sense. It feels the same. Yeah. So okay. So we we're done concepting. Client signed off. What's next? Um, then we outline the video, uh, pretty much, and then we say, uh, okay, this is gonna be our co- this is gonna be our concept. So we can talk about these questions, these topics. We can talk about um, this stuff, or we should ask these questions to people. We should uh, we should definitely have this uh, sentence in the video. Yep. And then we just outline the video. You yep. know? And that also comes back. We go back to that kickoff meeting. Like. Yep. Is there like a specific brand phrase that we need to make sure that we add to the video? Are there specific questions that we need to make sure that we ask to invoke certain answers, right? Mm-hmm. Or how do we ask this one question 30 different ways Definitely, so that we can yeah. get better answers out, right? Yep. So we start, yeah, we start concepting. And that the, that question list, I mean, it can go from like five questions to like, I think we got up to like as much as 25, yeah. 30, 40 questions, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, besides that question list, we ask questions like at that point like while we're recording stuff if you have right. something you know pops into your mind you just ask that question too yep. so we have a lot more than that list yeah yeah but uh but that question list is super important definitely right definitely, that definitely. becomes almost if you're gonna do interviews uh kind yeah of like, especially uh about us video especially uh it's it's really important yeah i would also say especially if you're if you're interviewing people who are not used to being on camera, definitely yes. the question yes. list becomes very important mm-hmm. because they've you got easy. You start with like daily questions. Yeah. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, yeah, we'll, and we'll, we'll get into that when we yeah. get into the production side of like how we actually you know go about. Uh, okay, so good. We got our outline. We're we're almost to the point. Everything right now is literally just like spreadsheets. Oh yeah, Pinterest boards, Google mood Docs. boards, yeah. Google Docs. Right. There's no actual visual things other than like. The visual reference we some pulled, right? Shots, yeah, Other yeah. Than some but we haven't. We actually haven't put anything else together, right? So mm-hmm. it, sometimes, okay, uh, the script part it can be. It, it depends on if the if the um if this particular video is going to call for a script. Yeah, or it, it depends it's not, on clients' right? needs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
we use script a couple of times yeah right? we usually go like a little bit with interviews it's hard because add some script again you're it. usually yes. talking to people that aren't used to being on camera or Definitely, recording yeah. their voice so they're really nervous or they're just kind of awkward so the script it's hard to get great delivery mm -hmm. in a full like monologue type yeah, thing that you would yeah. think like oh it's really easy for you know uh i don't know John Hamm to like monologue for like whatever commercial, yeah. right? Or even like NBA players to do for like, you know, because they're, they're in front of camera all the time. They're in front yeah. of the camera all the time, right? They're, they're stars. They're, yeah. they're used to it, right? Mm -hmm. So, like for these people, you have to always think about like, you can't just write a block of text and expect like great delivery. This isn't going to be like Matthew McConaughey in a Lincoln commercial, yep. you know? Yep. It's going to be awkward. That commercials that are kind of funny, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be awkward. It's going to be really like, uncomfortable usually they're too stiff or oh, you yeah. know like they there's all they kinds of blank at they all they they're just blank, really right. good, like one breath you know it's yeah it's, so it's, it's difficult to do it i wouldn't i, I couldn't yeah i wouldn't right. be able to do it so the know? more you can make it sound natural like yes. how that person talks uh the better it is right yeah, so sometimes more, we ask yeah. them to write the script themselves which right. makes it easy because they, they it's their words um but then sometimes they just get too like robotic mm -hmm. um in one case, we had a script writer. We hired a script writer. She's a professional script writer. So yep. she helped us write a corporate video script um, mm -hmm. and took literally like what was almost four minutes worth of content and put it into, you know, like 30 to 30 45 seconds, seconds yeah, right? Like and it, re and yeah. it delivered really well, right? Yep. yep. Um, okay. So script, uh, we've got um, the outline done. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about production confirmation. Yeah. So like... Um. There's a there's a bunch of stuff that happens when you're filming a movie, a mm -hmm. commercial, or anything, right? Mm -hmm. On budget, big budget films, right? There's a whole team that is just in charge of like location. Yep. Are we going to have enough people? Is there going to be hair and makeup on time? Do we have a hair and makeup artist? Do we need to get food for the for the talent? Yep. All these things. So, why don't you dive into? Because you've actually stepped into that role, helping me. Because I used yeah. to do everything by myself, but now like it's it's easier to divvy it up. Um, while I'm focusing on maybe just talking to the client or, you know, maybe doing some more questions. And more management. So, yeah, yeah. So you, you've stepped in and, and, uh, and you've handled all the, almost like being a producer. It's almost like being a producer. I think so. Yeah. For the last, um, let's go from that, uh, that same company, uh, for example, uh, I started with like booking our tickets because yep. the company that we work with was in, in another city. So I started like booking tickets, you know, yep. book, uh, well, first we have travel. to lock down the date. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. This is um so we give the outline, we come up with the script, they yep. accept everything, they like everything and then we just lock set, the dates. We set production dates. Yep. Uh and then we just book our uh, travel. And then um we we did the makeup artist. Uh yeah. we booked the makeup artist after yep. that and then we booked our everything. Then uh yeah, then we decided we we asked for some help for the location scout. Right, that was the next step. Right, because we didn't have chance to go there and yeah. then do the location scout by ourselves. Yep. So we asked for some videos and some pictures, you know, in different yeah. lighting situations. So, so let's we let's could sidebar more. Yeah, yeah, let's sidebar that for a second. Yeah. So, um, what Oz is kind of explaining right now is what we normally would call a tech scout. So if we're local or if we're you know we know we're gonna have an extra day ahead of time, mm -hmm. then it gives us the ability to do this thing called a tech scout and that's exactly what it is we're going to yep. go and look at if it's an if it's their office or if we need a specific location uh, obviously on a giant production you have a location team and they'll go and like yep. give you a, a like a list here yeah. which ones do you like director you know and like you just pick a b and c and let's go let's go shoot right yep. um and then you pay permits and all that all that stuff but this is like really super low budget so we yeah, don't have we're that. talking about really low budget right here. really yeah. low budget yeah. so we don't have we're not pulling permits so most of the time it's going to be in their office mm -hmm. providing they have an appealing looking office yep. or if not we'll stage the office to make it look good right oh, yeah, we'll just that, take a bunch yeah. of furniture That's or wherever they, step. Yeah. yeah so um but this tech scout is really important. Like you were saying, we need to look at like, hey, what is the lighting going to be like in before we even add any yep. lights? Like where, what corners are good? You know, where is there going to be like a sound problem? Yeah. Because there's an air conditioned vent. Is there going to be like um, people passing issues by? With, and, you right. Know, is there, like, is it, is it high traffic? Is there yep. an issue with power? Do we need to run like really long extension cords? Yep. Because, you know, we often are running the cameras for a really long time. So mm -hmm. um, 
that tech scout yeah. is really important. Yeah, from uh, that whether like, we do we it or whether car, it's virtually yeah. done. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It's so, just everything. It depends on that. That's a really big step that people miss. Yeah, I, well, I think time. a lot of people probably don't know. Yeah, like, yeah. You just don't probably. know until you know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They think they're just going to show up. You're at just going to set. Yeah, right. And like, the worst thing is like you never have enough time. Right? Even never. when you we set extra time and we still run out of yeah. time, right? Never. You never have enough time for a production. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's kind of the production uh, production confirmation. You know, that's like all the steps. I mean, I'm sure there are a lot of like, m- like little stuff that we did, but I sure. don't want to get into that, you know, details. Yeah, but from there, okay. So we're let's let's go through the checklist. So kickoff mm-hmm. meeting done, right? Concepting done. done. Outline all checked off by the client. We have our production mm-hmm. dates. So now we're moving towards a goal, like a date, a dated goal. Uh, so the next thing that we need to do. Oh, uh, sorry, skip the step. We have we have the script. We have the questions. We have everything we're gonna. We know we're gonna ask. What's it gonna look like? So let's talk about the shot list. My favorite, yeah. Yeah. So we create a shot list. Um, we grab shots from our like old videos that yep. we made, from some inspiration videos that we found online. Uh, we put down, uh, we put together a shot list, and then we put into that shot list. We put the location that we're gonna uh, shoot, in, and then our lenses, our cameras, what gear we're gonna use, um, what time we're gonna shoot that, like which day of our production. It's just. Everything that's like the uh, the most important guideline so that's the Bible. Use. Yeah, that's yeah. our Bible throughout the production. Right. You know that. Four, and five I will days, say whatever. this: it also serves a couple of other purposes. Obviously, it's an awesome piece of like resource to have day of shoot because you're all over the place. Like you don't, you're scrambling. You need to, you know, like there's a, a thousand things you're never going to think of. So if you can put it down on paper ahead of time, it's always yeah. better. Um, but the other thing it serves is like. Are we missing anything? What gear? What extra gear do we? That's need? kind of a checklist for it's us. It's totally just go a one by one yep. with all yep. the shots and stuff, you know. And it also gives us a chance to plan out the day. So if we need to move locations, we can plan it in order. Mm-hmm. So we're not like, okay, let's go here. Oh, we missed that. Let's go yep. back. Let's go back. You know, and we, we're yeah, wasting you have time. Everything in paper. It's really easy to move and plan your right. day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so that's yeah. something that has carried over from the production side. That you know, being on larger budget yep. things. That I think, obviously. Probably gets missed on a lot of other corporate A lot videos. of times. Yeah. I mean, nowadays it's getting a little bit more popular because there are so many easy ways sure. now online. You a know, million especially. YouTube channels talking definitely, about it. Definitely. And, like and besides yeah. that, there are like now websites that you can just create like yep. uh, shot, shot lists and stuff. It's getting popular, but yeah, definitely. I wouldn't probably know if I just did YouTube right. till now right. if I wouldn't work with it, you know? Yeah. Yep. That's something that people miss a lot yeah after that we just um sometimes uh this is this is not all the time we go through the shot list but sometimes we storyboard too right. if there's going to be like a story story yeah uh, we storyboard that too yeah um and i would call it like okay so traditional storyboard for anybody that doesn't know out there in mm-hmm. like film it's like you have you sit with the director has a vision with the script and then you give the script to a storyboard artist and they literally sketch it out Right like with the director, by frame, frame by frame, frame yeah. like this is, and we, I feel like we do do that, mm-hmm. but we do it. We don't sketch it. We don't have time or the yeah. budget to hire. And like both of us are not like, like traditional drawing, illustrating artists, right? So we're never. It's going to be stick figures and like circles. And for Jeremy sons. started to draw recently. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, Jeremy. <laughs> yeah. Um. But but no, seriously, like it's a really important step, and that's what in the shot list we put these screenshots, mm-hmm. which end up being like our storyboard. Yeah, so, yeah. like you were saying, either it's from a previous video that we've done, or if it's something that we see online that we like, mm-hmm. and we're trying to achieve the same feel and look, we'll totally use that as the storyboard. So, I, I don't feel like we ever skip it. We just don't do the traditional storyboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't do like uh, is as detailed as you yeah know, the movie production. Exactly. But yeah, we still we still have it. But. That storyboard, yeah. you know, it helps us in that particular shot. It gives mm-hmm. us like focal length yep. and it gives us like angle of camera. Definitely. You know, it gives us um, lighting. Just like technical little it, details. Yeah, it's super technical. It yeah. gives us lighting ideas. It gives yeah. us color ideas. Makes your life way easier. Yeah. especially It's, it's way easier than going to the production site and then oh, figuring yeah. out there, you know? Totally. So. Yeah. Especially, yeah. If you can, if you can figure out all that stuff ahead of time, like, okay, I need to offset the camera, you know, to the right because there's going to be something on the left or yep, you know yep, we're going to yep. we're going to center frame the person. our main light is going to be a window so we have exactly, to set up you know exactly. according to yep, that yeah yep. there's so, a lot of like little details yeah like that, that so i would get help there. i wouldn't say we skip that step but that's totally um we just don't do the traditional yeah storyboard yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, okay cool so locked in storyboarding uh we, now at this point this shot list which is our bible mm-hmm. we don't share with the client just yet yep. but we do eventually share this with the client because mm-hmm. it is really important it's a few things one it gives them an idea of like 
oh my God, these guys actually have their shit together and yeah, we're going to run a schedule. And people that have no idea what film production's like want to see a schedule, right? Mm -hmm. They want to be able to know like, okay, if I need to be on camera or if, my, if I have like 10 people that need to be on camera and they're in the middle of a work day, like how do we block them off, right? That's yep. really, that can be really tough. So uh, it, we end up, we do end up giving that to, to the client and it ends up becoming a really cool asset that they can have. They feel like they're really part of the production. Um, and it also it looks know, professional. And it looks like, professional. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it's they, they, like your client likes that because they pay you some money. They right. want to see some like right. and you know, they want professional. And you, we give it to them in a like uh, you know it's it's not a binder usually, but it's three or four pages stapled together oh, nicely. Yeah, it's it looks titled. nice. Our, yeah, it there's looks nice. Like our logo in it. You yeah, know, their name. it's branded. Yep, yep. Yeah, that that's something like those are little stuff. Yep. Those are like uh, really uh, I don't know. Like a little stuff, but they they make it look really oh, nice. Yeah. They make your production look really nice. Yep. And even if they just leave it on the side, it doesn't oh, matter. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> They're like, still happy yeah, to have yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh. Yeah. I mean, after that, we just uh, if we're gonna have cast, yep. Uh, we would start like booking uh, people. Yeah. Because we, now we have by our now we'd already started we have booking our people. Script. Right? You know, we have we know <laughs> what the production is gonna look like. Right. Yeah. Then just people. We yeah. And it, people. I mean, usually in a company corporate video, you're not like. Yeah, getting a lot of, of course, talent yeah. outside but if you need extras mm -hmm. in the background or things like that yeah by now we'd we'd already we've already booked extra talent if we need it because if you don't like it's really hard to lock that down mm -hmm. like week of yeah or, yeah, or, yeah, know, yeah. I know. yep um, um, okay same thing with equipment rental right that's a yes. step that if we need to re like request any equipment we'll put it down but we actually don't pick it up until week of the shoot yeah but we still definitely. plan it ahead of time mm -hmm. if we need an extra lens or you know yeah. Extra camera there are a lot of websites whatever. that you can just order like uh up front. Yeah, you know, you can or just and say, they'll I'm actually drop ship this it. in two months later right. and then they just send you that week. That's that's perfect. Yep. Yeah. Um yeah, after this, we just fly. So now it's yeah, now it's time to go, right? Yeah. So we're good. Like at this point, um, I, and I know this was like a really long winded answer of this this pre production thing, but at this point, like it's, it's not even long enough, actually. <laughs> yeah, true, <laughs> yeah. that's true. <laughs> at this point, you know we've spent i don't know how many hours this actually ends up being but a lot of hours. it depends on the client and how many you know sometimes we're shooting multiple videos in yeah. in a block of time so uh on that particular client we were mentioning earlier we ended up shooting like four videos right yeah. within yeah. within 3 days Definitely. so um and and we and we'll talk about that in production how we kind of cross mm -hmm. things over but uh that pre-production thing we're usually running that if, especially for four videos we're running that same process across these four different concepts of videos. Yep, yep. You so, do it again and again and again. Yeah, and it's again, literally yep. the same thing, but you you know, it, it it sounds really annoying and really time consuming and it is, but I can't stress like how much better the production comes together. I know. The edit comes together, like delivery becomes easy, client expectations are way low because they already know what they're getting their hands yep. into. Um so yeah, so if you're charging yeah. premium or you want to charge premium, really consider pre-production because it's a really important step. Yeah, I remember when I started first, you said like, oh, I know it feels really annoying, but I remember when I first started doing these things, I, f I felt like I was doing nothing, you know? Right. I didn't know why I was doing these things. I was just watching videos, writing down what lens we were going to use. Right. I writing down... Oh, you probably just thought, like, this guy is like, just oh, making me do on. like busy yeah, work. It's just, I'm just working for, to work, you know? Like yeah. I'm not doing anything, uh, anything good or and creative. then we went to that production <laughs> yeah uh days i was like oh okay now i get it yeah, now it, i know the importance it makes of it that. so much easier it man. makes it so much easier yeah. especially if you're a one or two man team like it, yeah you know you don't have again you don't have that 150 person or even like on a on a on a small production you know like a small commercial shoot it, it's probably like just on the department of like producing it and getting it shot filmed recorded like it's like 15 to 20 people. You know, yeah. there's like a director, a cinematographer, yeah. a camera assistant, yeah. you know, and then there's the second a camera assistant. Yeah, there's and then there's somebody guys. who's transferring all of the, the footage and set then designer, there's set designers, there's a lot of right, people. costume and hair and makeup and people who are just the assistant director is really the person who's in charge of the show on, on a giant set uh, or a larger set, I should say. Um, they're literally the person going through this Bible that we've created. Mm -hmm. Um, Making and sure everything making sure everybody's on time, right? And that's that's like the assistant directors usually that's their job. They're the guy calling action, things like that. Um, but again, what what it does is it gives everybody a chance to really focus on their one job, and that's why things come out so great. Yep. But on our productions, you know, it's it's often like us, and then mm -hmm. maybe we get lucky and we get somebody else. You know, Jeremy's helped out. Uh, yep. Jay back in the day has helped out. 
Andrew's helped out. Like yeah, when Andrew it was helping us at yeah. the production, you know? Yeah. So it's like, it's literally like two, three, maybe four, if we're lucky, you know, people. And like you and I were, we split directing, we split cinematography, yeah. we split being gaffers, which is the lighting. We split, you know, like, I mean, pretty much everything. Everything. That yeah, we, we split, said, we split you know, everything. All, yeah. that, all that. I mean, we split set designing, yeah, which is exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I, you know, like we run to Home Depot to grab some like little lights. Yeah, we'll, added, we'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah, yeah. We do everything. All right. So, yeah, cool. I mean, yeah, we can go through the production. Now. Yeah. So let's yeah, get into the, let's get into the interesting part, yeah. which no one wants, you know, everybody wants yeah. to hear, like, okay, how. How do you actually shoot this thing? Like, how are you capturing the footage? Um, So, like you were just alluding to, we got there at this one particular client. Mm -hmm. uh, And I think I think always telling a story about this always makes a lot more sense to people. But um, yeah, we got there. We had our lighting kit that we already pre brought. We, we, you know, flew with it um, and it ended up not being enough. We anticipated that there was going to be more lighting coming through this Mm -hmm. giant window, but it was tinted and the lighting in the interior was a little bit dim. Yep. So what do we That's do? That's why tech Scott is important. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So so we luckily like we planned we planned this right. So we oh, yeah, got there definitely. a half day early. Yep. Or actually a day we a got there day a day early, early, but we had the half day for the meeting. Right. So we had like a half day. We empty. had a half day just yeah. to look at the physical locations mm-hmm. in person and really assess like what it's going to look like. And we even did like some lighting tests. And oh yeah. Setup. Yeah, definitely. Um, we just grabbed the camera, just walk yeah, around, just you walk know, around. See the frames, mm-hmm. like what's happening, what kind of light uh, lighting we're going to have, that kind of stuff. And then, uh, yeah. And then you feel the, you feel the empty, empty gaps, you know, like, yeah. Oh, we need more lighting here. Let's just go yep. to, like this place and buy more. And then we need more audio equipment here. Let's right. go and buy some stands or, yep. you know, that kind of just little stuff that you can just do like a day or two before. Yeah. The problem is when you have a certain budget. Oh yes. It's not like we could go out and buy like a real light. So we ended up yes. going to home Depot actually. Yes. And buying these, if if anybody out there knows what a quasar light is, it's essentially like this tube light, um, and it it it's like a fluorescent tube, but it's digital and it's like uh, wireless and you know whatever. Um, we bought like the Home Depot version Definitely. of that. It wasn't yeah, wireless; yeah. we yep. had to plug it in. Yep. But it had colored. It had three different color modes, which was great. Um, yep. And it literally just became like an accent light in the back for us to use we ended up buying two of them for like 60 bucks which was awesome right because yeah, you yeah. can't buy any real like film or photography lighting for that no cheap way. even the ones on amazon you know no, they're not they're not real right real right. photography or videography lights okay so it was it was really good that we got there early for that tech scout so that we could figure out that lighting problem that we had right mm-hmm. um so we try to always plan a, a day ahead at least it, to add an extra day Definitely. to go and text out, especially ahead. You know, it's nice to have that day on the end oh, to yeah. like just kind of chill, but that doesn't really happen. Um, so, okay, let's talk about the, let's talk about like shooting. So, okay, we're there. We've talked to the client. We've tech scouted. We've got all that out of the way. We're up and ready to go. Mm-hmm. Um, day one of shooting. Everybody's really nervous. Oh yeah. Everybody's really nervous, you know, but, the people with the highest confidence, they're like, oh my God, what yeah. am I going to say? You know, what are you guys going to ask? When are we starting? It's just so nerve wracking, yeah. I guess. Um, and it, then it, they see the makeup artist. Oh yeah, it makes it even worse. It makes it even worse, you know? And then they see the camera equipment and then they see the set. It makes it even like, even worse. And then they just sit down. Yeah. And then you start <laughs> so, asking questions. Let's, okay, let's, ba- let's back it up real quick. So let's talk about... Um, <laughs> Let's so the questionnaire that we end up asking them essentially, right? Mm-hmm. We so this is a great this is a great trick for anybody out there who's you know going to do corporate style interviews or just you know documentary type interviews. Um, we don't ask or send the questions ahead of time. Ooh, we yeah. give them ideas. We're like, hey, we're going to talk about this, and we talk about we give them basically the topics, but we don't give them the questions. Mm-hmm. And the reason why we don't we don't give them the questions is because. We know what's going to happen. You give the questions; they're literally just going to sit down, they're going to write down, and write down the answers, answers, and then they're going to read it word for word. Right. Yep. So that's really important. I can't stress that enough. That again, like again, it should be more natural. The more natural it is, the more ums and uh, and let me think about it, and like kind of like that blank look when you're about to when you're like processing something. It almost it's like it's kind of awkward on camera, but it makes it that much more realistic. And then we get a lot of bloopers, and we get a lot of bloopers. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, which ends up being its own video on its. Uh, we can set that for a separate podcast. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. But so so after yeah, so the first person sits down and they're really nervous. Mm-hmm. You got to. I mean, yeah, you should get this part because you ask questions. Yeah. how do you ask questions? So and I I even I don't even like calling myself a director, but to direct these style videos, it's like it's it's a, it's 
I don't want to say it's an art, but it's definitely it's definitely like a style. It's you something. have to be. Yeah. And anybody who's done like a documentary will understand how this goes. Uh, and even documentaries are way. I I've never done one of those, so that's way above my 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 head mm-hmm. on how to get the proper because I think that's like journalism almost you know oh yeah at some point um, I mean ours is pretty much but, like a documentary because we don't yeah. have sh- especially when we shot the b-rolls and stuff right, we don't right. have anything like we just follow people and then grab nice shots right. which is like a documentary yeah you know, it is like a go documentary out yeah. and then let's say follow animals and get the nice shots yeah and, and the reason I mean obviously these corp- you want to make these less corporate-y Definitely. even though they're corporate videos but you want to make them feel like you're in the office with them. You understand how they're feeling. So that's mm-hmm. that's the B-roll you're explaining. Yep. Um, but the the question air part is really it's crazy because, um, I, honestly, the first like two minutes that I'm and two minutes doesn't sound like a long time, but it is, on camera two minutes is a really long time, right? To the first two to three minutes, I'm just asking them questions about their morning. Like, hey, oh, yeah, what did you eat for breakfast? What did you do last night? Did you do anything fun? And literally, what this does is. In their head, they're like, "Oh, this isn't bad. I can, I can yeah. handle this." They yeah. get confident. Um, it I know breaks how, the ice. To answer that, you know? I yeah. know how to answer yeah. that. I don't have to. I'm not making anything up. It's not awkward. Yep. Uh, and their answers just start to flow naturally. Mm-hmm. And it, you just kind of you work your way into the first questions. Yep. And the first questions, like even though you put them, like we put them in in a certain order on the mm-hmm. list, I never ask them in order. Oh yeah, definitely. and I never ask them in order to the next person. I always go random order. Um, but I always try to start with like, "Why do you like working here?" You know, and it becomes, and that becomes like a real answer. Like, wait a minute, I can answer that. Like, yeah. oh, I like working here because da 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 da, right? Or and then it and then it gets to, to we get to the hardcore questions, and by the end of it, they're just like, oh, and then we'll ask them the same, or we'll ask them the same question in a different way. I'll phrase it different usually. Yeah. Um, and it's very one on one. So you hear me talking. Yeah. But then I I leave a gap and let them talk. Um, uh, and usually one key thing that I learned, and this is just learning on the job. When you ask a question, it starts to formulate more questions in my head. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, I want to ask them, you know, these three questions. But you really have to like let them finish their answer because a lot of times it's w- lo- longer. There's been a couple of people where they're like one word. Oh yeah, yeah. How do you like working here? Great, <laughs> <laughs> love it. What did you eat today? Breakfast. You know, it's, <laughs> yeah, it's know. really it's that. I mean, right? yeah, there's the, yeah, there's, there's gonna always going to be that guy yeah. uh, or gal. So, um, the but. If you let them like just keep talking, that's usually the second half of whatever they're talking about starts to really come out and their personality starts to show. So I try to just let them roll on. Yep. Like some of the takes we did for that one company were like 20 minutes oh, long, right? Yeah, yeah, we yeah. just let the camera roll for 20 yeah. minutes. Yeah, we aimed for like 10 to 15 yeah. for every person, but sometimes people just, you know, just talk. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, more yeah you answers, get them going. More, yeah, cool, more options in, in yeah. the edit, you know? Uh, so yeah, during. That interview, while Jared is asking the questions, I usually be behind the cameras. Yep. Check the audio. Check the you know framing. Yep. You're doing all the technical wrong. stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Looking for weird lighting stuff. issues. Yep. 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 If somebody's just gonna you know walk by, you paying attention to their them. hair. Yep. You know if their yep. like yep. shirt is wrinkled. Definitely. Mic just is showing little stuff. So so yeah, the director <laughs> can ask the questions. Yeah. So you know? <laughs> it, but you, there's there's a chance you're not gonna catch everything, right? So let's yeah. talk about. <laughs> so there was this lamp. Oh yeah. That was behind. <laughs> I know, uh, I know. this lamp it was it's one of those impossible. like it was it was Gosh. I know it was yeah. but it it's literally um it's like this lamp that's like I don't know I don't know how to it's like a desk lamp but it's it's tall it's a, yeah. it ends up being a floor lamp but uh over time like we didn't tighten it down so over time it started to like slowly sink yep uh and we didn't notice it until we started playing back and we were like fast forwarding. We were like, "Whoa, wait a minute! Holy shit, the lights uh, moving!" Yeah, yeah. Yep. So uh, that There's was a little bit. Gonna be that. Yeah, we had to do some post production wizard wizardry VFX magic in the end. I mean, which yeah, Jet cool. was in the VFX as you, as you know. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, yeah. that's our that's but, our shooting process, that, interview process. Yeah. So that's I mean that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Mm-hmm. Um, let's talk about let's talk about the extra bonus stuff that we usually do, right? Where we try to break. We really try to break the ice with the team, trying to get them to like come out of their shell. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll interview in groups, and usually, often Ooh, like yeah. two people, That's three people, one. makes it really like a lot easier for the person because they don't feel like they're the only one on camera feeling yeah. the pressure. They feel like they talk to each other. They just you know, right. yeah, uh, mock each other. Yeah. They just you know, give like witty answers and mm-hmm. stuff, and usually then get, get the funny fun answers stuff. out of yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. 
Um, and the B-roll, the stuff you kind of were alluding to. So B-roll is mm-hmm. really important for these type of videos because Definitely. it's really boring if you just have a couple of people like talking the entire yeah. time. So our the way we think about B-roll is like Oz was saying, we try to make it like a documentary. So we'll cut in when someone's talking and we'll mm-hmm. have a shot of, you know, whatever. Yeah. So we, you know, obviously that becomes it's like just, aerial it footage. It the uh, story stronger. Like if yeah. they talk about their city. We yeah, we like were driving around cities. the city. We yep, spent yep. a whole day driving around capturing footage in the city. Yep. Uh, we flew the drone all over so we could get some cool photos. We did a bunch of time lapses. So that's all stuff that that's the more, I guess in, in any case, that's our creative outlet. <laughs> we mm-hmm. get to be a little bit more creative and fun with our shots. And, um, you know, we get to explore a little yeah. bit more and just kind of, it's the fun part. Yeah. Running gun shoot. Uh, and even in the B roll, we definitely pre produce that as well in the pre-production right in the shot list Definitely. it may not be the shots we end up capturing because obviously like we were in the city there's no way we were going to know mm-hmm. what what I we mean, were you don't see. stage the b-roll so yeah yeah, yeah. exactly yeah. um you but know, wait, whatever you get yeah and you know you, you never know like if something cool is going to happen and you're going to catch it yep. on camera things like that but um but we still like we were like okay we need to get a neighborhood we need to get you know a skyline we need to get driving footage or you know whatever it is we knew we needed to get and then when we were in the office we staged like hey we need to get people working on the computers we need to get people interacting with each other high-fiving and you know all these things even like having breakfast you know having meetings and yep. you know just hanging out you know, that kind of anything stuff. to show them in their natural environment you know anything, it's almost yeah. like 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 an animal documentary yep, yep, <laughs> like, yep, yep. just like catch them in their natural <laughs> yeah, that's environment what I said. just follow people and yeah. then you know uh, just document their day and then and then uh, end up it ends up being great uh, right actually, right yeah. I mean, and i mean I, I, it ends most up sometimes being... the most useful footage uh yeah. that like b-roll that we just follow people and then you know i totally. uh, don't know whatever we're gonna get yep. yeah uh it ends up being really um long like all this footage it, it becomes Ooh. gigs and gigs of footage you know um which becomes its own thing where we end up like so let, uh, yeah let, that's a great segue let's talk about what, okay, so now we've captured, you know, day one footage. Mm-hmm. What do we do? Because uh, number one get, is like you don't want to lose it. Yes. Uh, so again, the last the last job that we worked at, we were planning to shoot um, like six to eight hours per day. Yep. But we always ended up shooting ten to twelve hours per yep. day. And then with that, with that, uh, like with no energy, you just go back to your place, your hotel or your Airbnb, whatever. And then the first thing is just back up. Yep. Back up all the footage three times. Yep. And then yeah, that's that's probably the most important step of the day because even just one clip, you cannot use anything. You right. cannot lose anything, you know? Right. Especially so, if it's yeah. like an interview piece. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. So one question so might be the we most always, important one. We know? always bring three hard drives, like Oz is saying. We back yep. it up three times. So we have three different copies. So at any point in time, if he gets abducted, if I get abducted, yep. or if we both get abducted, yep. there's at least yep. one more copy. Yep. Yeah, we just carry them around like uh, in different places. Like yeah. one in my backpack, one in one yep. in his backpack, one, and one then one Andrew. in just like in gear or you know yep. somewhere else yeah that's uh that's the backup part and then you just wake up and do it again yeah so then yeah. you know it becomes day two day three yep. uh, okay cool so we've wrapped production mm-hmm. um clients feeling really good my this is so funny because andrew's always like how do you feel about what you shot and i'm like ah we yeah, got some good stuff it was all right yeah, yeah. you know i yeah. never i never like feel that confident yeah at the end of it. doesn't love anything it's just yeah i like it i like it yeah well it nice. you don't love it until it comes <laughs> together right but i, I mean and that's where I, and that's where the you know third act of the magic trick comes in is yeah. like now we go into post production. Yes. Um and quite a lot of is, is kind of planned out ahead of time. Mm-hmm. Um as far as like we have a script to follow. We have a and this is again going back to that Bible, the most important yep. piece. This is where it all comes together because we've already built this shot list of exactly almost exactly what the order of the edit is going to be mm-hmm. ahead of time. So I'm like when Oz has to slave over the edit, <laughs> he's not going through trying to figure out. And sometimes, you know, you run into problems and oh, there's things you're sometimes not going to... Sometimes the client wants to change the yeah. you know, story you're, a little you're bit always or they going... want to add stuff. Yeah, right, or like changes. something sounds better ahead of, Definitely, you know, yeah. like if someone says something, it sounds better in the Ooh, beginning or the end. We didn't so. talk about the audio part. Oh, that's true. Yeah. So like, okay. Yeah. No, let's part. talk about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Let's go back to that. 
Um, so we usually record with two mics. Yep. If, you're, if there's going to be just one interviewee, we record with two mics, one love mic and then one boom mic on top. Yep. Also, we have the shotgun mics on the camera. So yep. we have like four or five backups of every just single in case. audio. You never know. Yeah. Um, even if it's bad, it's better than nothing. Definitely. I mean, even if you know that you have the audio, sometimes they just move and the love yeah. mic doesn't work. So you, you can get cut to, another piece in. Yep, yep. yep. So you have to have a lot of different um, like pieces of audio yep. backups. And yeah, we record into cameras, also to our uh, our recorder, recorder. Uh, yep. with the boom mic. That's um, that's pretty much the audio. You yeah, know, but uh, in a nutshell, it's just so like a, in a better in a better budgeted production, you can mm-hmm. actually afford to hire a guy who just comes in yeah, records audio. Boom you know, guy, yep, yep, a boom yep, yep. A, mo- a boom mic operator, yep. which ends up being um, an amazing thing to have, you Definitely. know, available because then it's one less thing you have to think about. Yep. You just got a guy who knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. You know, they're sitting there, they're doing the thing yep. that you always see in Hollywood. But um, I mean, yeah, there were so, some times that we forgot to, you know, uh, press run, record. Yeah, button run on and one, and, yep. but luckily we had the backup. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. So yeah, yeah, uh, that is a great, great the, catch, great sound. catch. All right, so um, now audio secure. We got all the backup, yep. like hard drives going, and we're going home, right? Um, so now comes now comes the laborious part. I would say, yeah, um, not necessarily. I don't know. Think about this like a hamburger, right? You got pre production, which is this fat bone on top. The meat, which is like kind of thin in the middle, which is the production. And then you got this giant bun on the bottom, which is the post-production. Yes. But the the bun on the bottom may not be as big as the one on the top, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, But if you do your pre-production right, it becomes really, really easy. And it's time because you still... like. There's no way that you can go through the footage faster, right? There's no way to sort the footage faster. There's no way to like go and literally do the edit process faster unless... You know, you, you get faster as you're moving in the computer but there's no real the tool faster but right, you have but to watch the same amount exactly. of video yeah, so yeah it's, it's yeah so that part never goes away oh right? yeah definitely so but if you do your pre-production right what mm-hmm. goes away is like the guessing the yep. oh shit we forgot to shoot this oh mm-hmm. we forgot to do that. and sometimes that does happen or we shoot something and it doesn't come out great and we have to go do a pickup shoot yep, yep, um, yep. that actually yeah, happened yeah. on this particular thing we shot the neighborhood it was like during winter time and it was kind of ugly and mm-hmm. cold and like kind of dreary and didn't fit the rest of the video so we grabbed the camera and the drone and we went out and shot um on another day here in la in a neighborhood that looked kind of similar to like yeah. what you would see there but yeah uh, luckily, like LA has all kinds of <laughs> different all areas where you can, yeah, yeah, you can you, find everything. You in can LA. any flavor <laughs> yeah. you want, right? So, yeah. um, so okay, so let's talk about let's talk let's, about the post. Let's go to beginning. Uh, so we came home. Uh, first day of pro, pro, uh, post production, we just back up again, yep. again. You know, just you cannot have any, you know, enough backups. Uh, we back up to our server that we have in house. And then uh, I start watching videos, a lot of videos, <laughs> <laughs> so hours of hours of videos, yep. and then I pick the shots that I like. Yep. Uh, I don't go like really, you know. Um, the first pass is not that detailed. Oh, yeah, yeah, not detailed. It's just it's like just, this sounds good. Keep it. This sounds good. Keep definitely. it. It's yeah. what we call selects. Yeah, yeah. The, the first selects. Um, we just pick the shots. You know, the videos actually, not even shots. We pick the videos, nice yep. videos, uh, clips, and then uh, we put them into timeline, yep. and then start start creating a video. You know, just cutting the nice shots, putting together according to your script and your shot list and your storyboard. Yep. And then we probably get like a first draft in a week yeah. or two, like a week to week, 10 yeah. day, you know, 10 days. Um, and then, yeah, we get the first draft and then we have the first meeting with yep. our client after the production. We give them the first uh, first draft. So, yeah, let's talk about... I'm going fast, right? Yeah, you yes, are. It's I'm okay. Scared. No, no, it's okay. <laughs> let's t- okay, so let's talk about the first cut. So... First cut is very rough cut, right? Like yeah, you were saying, we did, raw. we don't trim a lot of stuff. Yep. The color is completely. We haven't balanced any color. We don't it's spend any flat. time on color. Yeah. Um. And the reason why, even though you're you think that the client is not going to like it, we we set the expectations. We tell mm-hmm. them, hey, this op this option that you're going to see for version one is not going to have color correction. It's not going to have uh, audio correction. It's very rough, very raw. And the yeah. reason we do this is sometimes there's no music on the first draft. Yeah. We usually, just, yeah. usually it is. If it is, it's just like a. a a it's five a second holder. track that yeah. we just put in just for timing. Um, but the reason why we do this in this fashion is it is really intensive computer wise and Oz's time and whoever else is working with us mm-hmm. to start color grading. Like if you color grade the first edit, chances are you're going to throw away Definitely. 20, 20 to 30%, maybe 50% yeah. of it, right? You're going to yeah. either throw it away or you're going to trim it. So there's no reason to color correct it. It's just a waste of time. Mm-hmm. There's no reason to spend time on audio because you're just going to throw it away. Most of this stuff is all throwaway. Yeah. It's literally just to get them an idea. of It's a rough sketch of mm-hmm. literally what 
the like video. Who's going to be in the video? Who's going to be in the video? Of, yeah. Who or who can we cut out or, yep. you know, like that kind of stuff. And just so you know, like we interview like 10, 15 people, right? But not everybody makes Even the more cut. Than that. Or if they do, it's like not everybody gets the same screen time, right? Mm-hmm. It's just like any other movie. Um, so, uh, okay. So we, we present the first cut to the end uh, of going on your, your timeline. It's like a week. Mm-hmm. Some people may think that's a long time, but we actually set oh. that expectation ahead of time. Yes. We're like, hey, the first cut is going to take longer than any other one yep. because we're literally going through. We, we spend, we actually put on our bid a time for like transcoding, which is all of the transferring of the data, yep. sorting, like making tr- we have to build a folder structure. Yeah, like there's all this stuff folders, that goes. Yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah, that organization is super important. But that is in the production confirmation. You know, you give exactly you give your client the timeline. This yep. is gonna take a week, this is gonna take two weeks, or yep. you're gonna get your video in a couple months, three right. months, five months, whatever is your timeline, right. you know? Uh that's something that you hopefully have to Hopefully not five months, but <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully, hopefully, hopefully. I mean, uh yeah, hopefully not. Maybe hopefully five yeah. months. Maybe you get a big project. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, maybe yeah, maybe it's yeah, a film. You never know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's that's something that you have to set the expectations uh, way ahead in the in the pre production. Again, you know, the in the in the most important yep. part. And then yeah, we give our first draft to client. Uh, give them a couple of days and then get their notes. Yep. And then we usually give it to them on the on the end of the week so they can have the weekend yep. to kind of chew on it. Yep. That way they don't feel like they're working at the mm-hmm. same time as looking at it, which is nice. Um, and they'll pass it. We sometimes. Depending on your client, you can tell them the, to give it to you know whoever else in the oh, office. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes they share with the other people. In the yeah, office. the Sometimes problem is you don't, don't want you don't want to give it to too many people in the office, especially the people that are on camera usually, because uh, if you give it to too many of them, they're like, oh, I don't look good on camera, take me out, you know, and then you run into that problem yeah. and you're fighting twenty different like chefs in a kitchen essentially. Mm-hmm. So we try to limit the amount of people who actually get to view and give notes. And we set that again. That's an expectation that we set up front. We're like, we're only going to take notes from this one person mm-hmm. or these two people. Um, and anybody outside of that, if you want to, if they want to pass their notes to those people on their side, that's fine. Yeah. But we only take notes from, from a couple of people. Otherwise we'll never finish anything or it'll never see the light of day. Right. You can't like even with one person's uh, notes, yeah. it takes a lot of notes. Exactly. We get a lot of notes, you yeah. know, uh, one of, we did two videos for the last client and one of the videos, we changed it like 75%, like yeah. from first edit to last edit, Completely probably like different. 75%, yep. the music, the cuts, the, you know, the shots and and people, it was so different. And if it, there was like three people giving us notes, oh yeah, that would be like a different movie, the different different video, you know? Yeah, for yeah. sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. So after for after okay, so now you're back in you're back into the edit yeah. software. Now I'm it's back like in slaving. Yeah. Now we're in, now we're in version two. So yeah. what's version two look like? Uh, the version two look like uh, we usually pick the music yep. that we're gonna use the like the final music, which in this Oz could spend a whole two. podcast on just talking about oh, how long it takes to pick music. Definitely. There's just like. Tons there's too of many websites. choices. Yeah, you know, too many there's choices. tons of websites. There's too many choices. You have to... So basically, you can listen almost identical music 10 times and just one of them fits your video. It's right. so weird. Just like, I don't know. You you open your video. You, yep. you know, you open your video, you watch it. And then at the same time, you just you just listen to music. Yep. You just listen hundreds it's of all about, thousands of music. For people who don't understand like what that's like or to go through that process, like Literally listening to that much music mm-hmm. is all about the process. I mean, it's all about the feeling that it invokes. Definitely, definitely, yeah. Okay. So yeah, uh, that's the music. You have to listen to a lot of music. And then uh, after the music, you you take the notes that your client gave you and then you just change your like footage, yep. add some B-rolls, take out some B-rolls, add some people or do the you know exact same thing uh, for the video and then render a second version, send it to client. This takes a week again. Yep. And then we again send it like by the end of the week. Yeah, same process. We get days. some more notes. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So version three. So let's skip because we'll skip ahead because version two, version one and two are different videos yep. and they look different. Because, but the essential is like we're taking all the rough sketch that we did and we're kind of fine tuning it. Right. Mm-hmm. By version three, we don't like to go back and forth too many times unless it's like crazy changes. Yeah. But by version three that we present to the client, because we have like 20 internal versions, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah definitely. <laughs> but by we version, have like a five version every single day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> by, ver- by version three to the client, mm-hmm. now we're talking about picture lock. We're talking about um, uh, like color. like yeah. we may, And we may have already started color grading at this yeah. point because we know that 
there's like 80% of the shots that are in this version two are going to stay to version three. So we start color grading them mm-hmm. um, and we, we lock picture, which li- essentially just means that we're not sliding the timeline around. We're not. Definitely. Yeah. By this time, your story frames. is, your right. story the story is pretty in. much done. Yep. Uh, you know, like what shots you're going to use. Definitely. Maybe just one or two shot might change, yep. but that's like a rare case. Besides that. Yeah. Then we color grade. Yeah. Uh, so color grading for anybody out there who's not that technical and, is, and has heard color grading. The basics of it are number one, you have to take all the clips and put them into balance, mm-hmm. which means that they look pretty much the same across the board. Uh, and then number two is then we stylize it. So yeah. if it's if they're if the tone of the video is warm and it's kind of warm and fuzzy and might empathetic, be like a little vintagey or yeah, or this it just that, depends yeah. on it depends on the product or the client. It depends on your uh, on your concept. Yeah, and it also has to beginning. go with the music. Yeah, it yeah, definitely. With, yeah, yeah, that's the color grading pretty much, and then uh, we finalize it. Yeah, we finalize yeah. it. So final touches usually include animations. So we do yep. lower third animations where mm-hmm. we're adding like name tags uh, or the, the logo. We'll do a title card where it's an mm-hmm. animated uh, logo. If they have one, they'll provide it. If not, then we will do it in house. Yep. Um, and then the end frame is literally just back to any information they want to share. Um, we don't do any end credits or anything like that. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Like we that. just add like, like, like their website, their number, mm-hmm. uh, their email address, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. And then your video is good to go. And then yeah, then and it's then final delivery. You and then we we upload it, and uh, yeah. of course we don't share it until client signs off and they're 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 sharing it right mm-hmm, that's usually mm-hmm. part yep. and that's part of like the, the contract yep um and i know like the end of this post-production stuff we're, we're running out of time and that was kind of condensed but oh yeah i mean um, we can make a whole different video just for <laughs> just for post-production yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah yeah so if there's anything we need to clean up if there's anything we need to paint out like that light we had to fix in post-production oh, stuff like that um and then the very final step is so we don't hope like data to host data it's really expensive now internally so yeah. we end up giving the client an option we'll either back it up for you and host mm-hmm. it um, for a fee obviously or we give them the option of like hey you know if you want to buy a hard drive we'll we'll buy it for you we'll you know we'll obviously get mm-hmm. reimbursed for it but we package up everything for them and then um, just ship it to you and we ship it to them and we give them all their footage so things that we don't give them we don't give them like working like editorial files oh, no. and there's right. a bunch of stuff we strip out of there we usually just give them the raw footage and the final videos in super high res, mm-hmm. um, high quality, so that if they want to use it for other platforms, you yeah, know, they usually use it for their like social media and stuff. You know, yeah. they grab some screenshots and make gifts and post it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I mean, that's pretty much oh, yeah, that's doing a corporate video. That was like a, in a that nutshell, was a lot, it was a lot, yeah, man. It was a lot of information. And, and, <laughs> and you know, for anybody listening out there, if you didn't gather the most important production part of the, any of this pre-production, um, I can't stress and Oz can't either how important that is to take it seriously and actually just give yourself time to do that properly um, ahead of time. So yeah, I guess we'll leave it there, man. That yeah. that was great. Um, know, one, yeah. thanks for being on your first solo podcast. Oh, yeah, of course, yeah. I um, mean, yeah, that was cool. That was yeah, cool. <laughs> yeah. Now your fun part is now you got to take all this and edit it. And I know, it, I know. Yeah, you have to put it together. Gonna, it's gonna it's gonna be so bad to watch myself talk. Yeah. It's it's just now yeah, that's your first time yeah, doing that. Oh know, no, no, yeah. you, I, well, solo at least. Solo, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, the, the episode two, the yeah. group episode. It oh, was also, just, I just like, want to note, me, you know, just throw this out there. This is our first time recording video in the office. Oh yeah, so this is actually our office. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I guess right. we'll just leave it at that. And if you guys have any questions, make sure you reach out. Um, you can find us info at tobyagency.co. You can hit us up on our website. Um, there's a multitude of ways to get in touch with us. Um, don't forget to rate, subscribe, tell a friend about the Run With Toby podcast. Leave us a nice comment and we'll see you guys on the next one.